Hello there, lovers and friends. Welcome to the podcast, appropriately titled Hello There, Lovers and Friends. And today I'm with lovers and friends. Yes. What's up? It's Keandra is here. Yes, yes, Courtney yes. is here. Deshaun is here. Hi. I have your fish intros. I'm going to read in a second. But first, can we break down why we're here in the first place? Hello there, lovers and friends is a podcast that is designed to speak to the inner relationship and intimacy expert in you, whether it's your sexual relationships, your friendships, or your romantic relationships. I want you to feel empowered to make the right decisions for yourself because you are armed with the tools that help you to do so. Kind of like how the iPhone made everybody a photographer. (laughs) that's that's what I'm aiming for with this podcast Um, and in order to accomplish that it's about bringing unique perspectives and trained perspectives and voices so you guys are here because I believe you are an authority on this topic and I respect you and I adore you I am joined by Keandra Jackson a licensed marriage and family therapist can I get a ooh ooh She has been seen on the Emmy award-winning show, The Doctors. She has been recently featured in the New York Times, Vice, Bustle, and the Huffington Post as one of the 10 black female therapists that you should know. She's also a three times author, shitting on my two time author. Okay. You know, it's <laughs> not up a little bit. Let's go, you know, all right. Right. <laughs> And she's an international speaker. Welcome, Keandra. Yay. Thank you. I'm also joined by Courtney, who is hypnotically free-spirited with an intoxicating charm. Yes. Also a property manager, also a masseuse. Yes. Also one of the six women in the game of desire. Absolutely. Hello, Courtney. Hey. (laughs) And on the far end of the couch is Deshaun, an environmental hot girl solving the California water crisis one drip at a time. Yes, one drip. Yeah. (laughs) Drip, drip. Drip. Deshaun is again one of six women who are featured in the Game of Desire. And it's so special for the two of you to be here and for you to be here as well, too. So today's episode, we are going to talk about black women being undesired in the dating world. And this is not an opinion. This is based on facts and studies that were done. For example, OkCupid did a review of who were the least swiped upon amongst the different genders. And data showed that the most that most men in the site rated black women as less attractive than women of other races and ethnicities of course on the flip side of the coin it's asian men who were rated less attractive than other races and ethnicities in the male category in addition according to the 2018 motherly state of motherhood survey black mothers are four times more likely to be single and serve as the primary breadwinners of their home so in short what is it like to date as a black woman interesting fun and difficult it's actually really difficult um i recently swiped swiped on someone and he was like oh you look a lot like my ex-girlfriend and i was like okay and i'm looking at his picture i'm like okay you're white he's like are you down with the swirl i was like you know i mean i honestly if i swiped right yes that isn't an indication that's an indication Mm -hmm. then the next question i got was do you wear a weave and I'm like, are these, is this happening still yeah. right now where Beyonce is wearing weaves, where all your celebrities are wearing weaves, all ethnicities are changing. And first of all, most of us have moved on to wigs. Thank, that's what I said. And you know, <laughs> that is very like, clear. Weaves, not so much, but braids, crochets, and wigs. <laughs> <laughs> and like that. But I just find it so interesting that that's still like a question that's stereotypically put on us. Like, is that your hair? Mm-hmm. Like, why is that a, a, a thing? And I'm like, there's so many ways you have to try to answer that or disarm it or like reroute that question to like get the ball back in your court and be like, okay, this is where we're going with the conversation. We're not going here. So do you feel like even though there's a yes that happened because you guys both swiped right and so there, there's the yes that happens, mm-hmm. they're still treating you like a maybe? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Because... The other comment that I got when I actually did go on a date, which turned out to be all right, was you're actually more kinder than I thought you would be. Or you're you're actually more intelligent than I thought, even though you didn't go to college. And I was like, wait, huh? Is that a compliment or is that a backhanded compliment? And that's like what like is happening during a first impression is you're having to almost check yourself too and saying, did this person really just say this to me? And then still try to get to know this person and see if they are a possible mate. I will say for me, it's more on the difficult side because I feel like I do 
get a lot of matches, but then it's just like, it never like propels to the next step. And it's just difficult to get those dates in general. And so that's like definitely been my um, area of struggle here, at least in the Los Angeles area. I will say that like when I was living in Georgia for school, um, it was a lot easier um, just because it's more black people populated in one city. Um, but yeah, it's just getting to that date to even try and see if you have built a connection or see if you, um, you know, want to pursue a relationship because I can't get a first date, let alone the second one. And that is extremely frustrating. Yeah. I think, first of all, that statistics makes me really sad. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I almost took it personal. I'm like, Ex excuse me? You know, how, how could you not? You should you know, absolutely. But I take in, take into consideration what the narrative everyone else has and uses and use that to my advantage. So be it if you think that we're less desirable, I want you to think that. Or if it's like, oh no, you are desirable, I want you to think that. I want to have the upper hand because I'm going to counter and like obliterate what you think. That's my whole mission. It's like even if it's saying, oh, you're not desire, oh, I can play into that. No, no, no. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to think I'm less than you because I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. But I want to know. Like, really? I, maybe I just love stats and just information <laughs> yeah. like that, but I need to know, like, what's mm -hmm. going on out here in these streets. You know, if but partially for the same reason that you do, because it's like I'm about to freaking obliterate your yeah. whole yes. life. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like it yeah. just yeah. go beyond, you as know? A, as a black woman, I just feel like I'm constantly underestimated. Yeah. Over and over and over again, and it has definitely worked to my advantage in that in that method. Whether that's in school, whether that's with men, whether that's with the conversation, I'm constantly um, underestimated. So yeah. Do you experience direct racism in the dating world? Have you? I know Courtney, you've had experiences before that I could quote for you because, <laughs> but I'll let you talk for yourself. But have you experienced that from people before wherein that it's not even implied that perhaps it's because I'm a black woman, I'm experiencing this or I'm not um, getting the response I want. They've literally said something to make that clear. I dated someone that I was going natural, wearing my hair in a natural state and I was getting ready, we were getting ready to go to something harmless like the movies where it's dark. Doesn't matter what my hair looks like. We're going here for a movie. And he literally said, well, can you put your white girl hair on? Mm -hmm. Referring to a weave or a wig. And I was like, no, I, this is what I like. And like to hear someone that I was kind of dating in a relationship with say these things that you're trying to force a standard on me and not accepting me for who I am was very self-deprecating. Yeah. It made me think twice about what my worth was because my hair was in a certain way or um, I was loud as a black woman. And I'm like, this is who I am. And it 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 sucks because it's like you're not only being rejected by the outside people, but when you do date people who are get closer, they do slide those little those little notions in there and those comments of like, are you sure you like this about yourself? Like, oh, I wish you were lighter skinned or I wish you had. Have you had someone skin. literally say that to you before? Like that I was lighter toned? Yes. Yeah. Like verbatim. Somebody verbatim. Has I said, wish. Like, wow. You probably look a little bit better lighter toned. I probably would. What's like, nuts is because your complexion is my. F it's a, it's <laughs> an age most psychic like, perfect. feature. Perfect. It's like. Thank you. Utterly amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you. Deshaun, have you ever experienced overt racism before in dating? I will say not particularly over or not anything similar to what Courtney has experienced. I think my thing is more so calling out some sort of perceived proximity to whiteness because a lot of people look at me and the first question, this even happened to me yesterday. I was at a bar and a guy was like, so what are you mixed with? And I was like, we've been communicating this whole time. I was like, I'm not mixed with anything. Mom's black, dad's black, that's it. Like that's, that's all I've got for you. It's like Mississippi and West Virginia in American history, like that's it. But it's not the first time that I've heard that or anything and I'm just like, so is that what attracts you to me? Is that like perceived, um, that perceived proximity or are you just really into me as the successful black woman that I am? And I think what we tend to do is to 
maybe not even overcompensate, but we try to explain ourselves and why we do want to wear our hair natural and we're not mixed. And we, we go through that whole process as a black woman and then we may come off as aggressive or, mm -hmm. you know, all those negative mm -hmm. stereotypes that people label us as. And then it's like, that wasn't even our intention. We just want to live in our authentic self. And why isn't that enough? Absolutely. And so for you, never having had someone said that, mm -hmm. how do you know that it impacts your relationships? Hmm. That's a good question. I think for me, it, would, it wouldn't necessarily be, I think that I, and, and this, this is what's stopping me in my tracks because I literally just had a conversation with two successful black men and they literally, well, one of them literally told me that they only prefer to date white women. Mm -hmm. And this was at a bar with other mm -hmm. black women that I met and we were all having a conversation and it really struck me because of the reasoning. It was very stupid. I can wake up with oral sex from them and you guys don't do that. And I'm like, that's your reasoning? Did you speak to the black woman president who gave you a list of the do's and do nots and was like, look, if you want to enter the club, <laughs> where, did, where did he collect this? Where's this sentence Listen, coming from? I have no clue. But I was like, OK, that's your narrative. That's very interesting. You know, very I've heard the same thing from like um, I had a I have a cousin, younger cousin, and his whole thing is that he likes white women for the same reasons. And I'm yeah. just like, but but why? Like, wh how is that? changing anything like why why do you have this perception and it's something that I don't understand and him being so young because I'm only 26 so him being like younger than 24 is just like well where'd you get this from mm -hmm. when did you come to a space where you gave yourself permission to be beautiful or to be seen as beautiful and did you have to make that decision was that I guess back to that marketing was that choice that you are beautiful that you were desired made for you or did you have to make it for yourself so I say that that idea for me came from when I went to Spelman. So being surrounded by beautiful black women who were successful, who were doing everything, just being so amazing. So obviously Spelman being a historically black college has that marketing there. Yes. there that's what they're promoting. That's what they're trying to get. They're trying to um, get the women who matriculate there to have that confidence, to see themselves First a way all, that words most matriculate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Look ahead. Um, who just see themselves and follow kind of in the footsteps of the women who came before. But it wasn't until I was surrounded by beautiful black women who were working for Goldman Sachs and me working for NASA and my friends, you know, like all of us having these like really amazing jobs and being in these amazing places all together and then studying because I was a math major. So seeing only black faces, black women faces, and then we would all get dressed and go to the club and being like yes it wasn't there you know growing up so I know it took until 18 19 20 to like really get into that mindset of you are beautiful because when I was in the predominantly white schools I wasn't desirable I wasn't you know what all of my peers were looking for you know they were looking for white women they were looking for Latino women but when I went to high school and I was one of the only predominantly African-American women. It was a culture shock for me. That's where I learned so many different cultures, right? And I knew that I was unique then because back then I wasn't about the natural hair. I was like, I need my straight hair. I need to blend in as much as possible. Even before getting there. Even before getting there. I knew that I needed to blend in. This memory always sticks in my mind. of like, I had a crush on the same person from senior kindergarten all the way up like and I'm to a for you point to switch a little bit it was, not, it was <laughs> consistent and to the point that like I knew where he lived and to this day I think if someone said my name to him we've never had a conversation because I never even acknowledged it's possible he could like me and I remember there was this like list that came out of all the people that he liked and all the girls were passing around like his list like oh Devin's list shout out to Devin Devin's list came out <laughs> Devin wish he had that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, can I see it? And this girl turns to me and she was like, why do you care? Not like you're ever going to be on it. And it was just that thing of like, why would I be on this list? And I accepted that as normal. And it wasn't until BET came out, which then my self, my vision, the light skinned girl was constantly positioned as sexy, was constantly a, a positioned as attractive, that I was able to start switching that narrative for myself. And in some ways that led to some damaging decisions because I only saw myself objectified. But in other ways, it also gave me permission out there in the world to walk around like I'm shiny. Like, look at me, I'm shiny. I could be on that list. 
Um, so I'm curious for you guys, was there a moment for you where you had to be like, no, I'm on the list? It was actually when I met with you, like just knowing and instilling that value is like, Court, you're great. And I'm like, she might be right. She might be right. Let me just take control basically and say, all right, I'm going to talk to whoever mm -hmm. I decide because I know my conversation is great. I know I know a lot about different topics. So it was it was it was having someone quiet that doubt that we all have and just say, no, you're fine. Go do it. And the rewards are beneficial because any room I walk into, I can be my goofy, loud or quiet self. But you're going to love talking to me. You're going to love that experience with me. And I can do that with an 82 year old war veteran or I can do that with a two year old toddler that's just trying to walk and crawl. Like it's like it's it's a different type of power and control that you have, but you do have to take it. Well, sometimes people don't even know that you have low self-esteem or you're doubting yourself if you just show up and, you, and show up in that energy anyway. Absolutely. Right. Like just think about like, you know, you stand in the line to get in at the club. Right. You know, your name ain't on the list, but you go up to the front and be like, check the list. No, check it again. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then he'll be like, OK, well, go ahead. You and your friends go ahead and come on in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like it's because you had enough guts to go up there and yep. be like, sir, Absolutely. let me in this door. I deserve to be here. You know, everybody else in the line going to be hating, but it's it don't matter. <laughs> but hot girls always walk up to the front of the line. Always. And they have confidence to do yes. it. Right. It's the other ones that's like, oh, I don't know if we're going to get in, girl. You know, that, those are the ones that never get in. But mm -hmm. you know what? It'd be them ugly girls you do sometimes see come to the front of the line and get in. Like, wait a minute now. If she look like that. How did yeah. that confidence? <laughs> that confidence. <laughs> Wait a minute, how did she get in and I did? <gasps> Oh, no. mm -hmm. that's, that's what self-esteem looks yeah. like. Someone else. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we even recognize the fact that our expectations, our internal expectations are so easily read out loud. And so if you don't expect, and that's why I say to people like the physical appearance, there was a study, right? Where this girl didn't get a mirror. She wasn't allowed to look at herself for two days. And for one day she went out and they're like, you're not wearing any makeup, your hair's not done, just go out there into the world. And then the next day they had a makeup artist that did her makeup but there was actually no makeup. She was just brushing nothing on her skin. And they asked her about the differences in her experiences. She's like, the next day I was treated better. People were kinder to me. And it wasn't, it was just her expectation to be. She expected to be treated better. She expected to be liked. She expected to be looked at. So she treated herself as such. And so that also I think has a lot to do with it. Yeah, that's true. Agreed. Yeah. You know, and then I'm, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say the inner narrative because we're already expecting Exactly. Different races to be like, nah, I'm cool on her. But that's not the truth. But there, I, don't, I do want to acknowledge that there are truly a whole group of people, black men and women, who are just all about that black love. Like, mm -hmm. And that's yeah, just love all. It. And that's just it. They like, I want blackity black, black, black babies. And that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? And that's fine, too. Right. We're not saying that that's not OK, but we have mm -hmm. to be aware of all aspects of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like, look, I'm just saying. French fries can be fried a different way. Yes. French fries going to be a and French seasoned fry. And seasoned a different way. And seasoned a different way. There was this study by PEW Research Center that said that newlywed black men are twice as likely as newlywed black women to be intermarried. So if a... Does that make sense to you guys, that stat? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it, so here's the question, I guess. In order to shift the narrative, do we have to shift that stat? Or should, is, not, is that not a question that we should even have? Because black women should just want who they want. Yeah, that's my deal. Just want who you want. Like, I don't care if they black, brown, or in between. Like, just live your best life. And the whole goal is to find your person. Mm -hmm. Period, right? The person that vibes with you, person that connects with you, who understands you, who's willing to rock with you and your foolery that comes attached to it. Like and your bonnet. Your bo nice. Listen, your yep. bonnet. <laughs> listen, the twist out that got to happen, the little t Felicia twist. <laughs> listen, all of that. You know what I mean? And if that person is not black, so be it. Like the, yeah. the goal is happiness. Thank you. But yeah. our... Are black women stopping themselves from achieving the goal? Are we preventing ourselves from achieving the goal by limiting the ways that we can win? So I, yeah. <laughs> I will say, based off of my experience on dating ads, is that I actually, I swipe on everybody. 
And what I find is I'll match with a yeah, select amount of um, people outside of my you race. You on everyone like you do, like, just like, let's go. No, <laughs> I swipe on the people that I find attractive. Okay, okay. Well, that, like, let's clarify. I read their bio. That is a method. That is a method. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, no, not any and everybody. Come on, we, we've gone through this yes, process. Yes, I was like, <laughs> come on. The book has to work with me. <laughs> we've, we've gone through this process. So yes, you know, I, I go through the bio, I go through the pictures, you know, do they have a diverse set of pictures you know can i see everything yes so but i'm also not only swiping on black men what i'm finding is that especially like on bumble where women have to reach out first only black people respond back to me Mm -hmm. so i might match with people but only black men respond back to me so that's who and i've already like we already discussed how like even if we respond back getting that date further is even like more difficult so i'm just not in that pool of like dating people outside of my race because even in a situation like that where it's just like it's not happening i feel that black women are stifling themselves if you are only swiping on black men i know you're not but i'm like if you are out there only saying, oh, I only want black love, then absolutely. But if you're really trying to find yourself or find that person that's going to be there for you or be compatible with, you are highly limiting yourself. Because even who's not to say if you're swiping on all these ethnicities and you do swipe on a black person, you have a great conversation, then so be it. But what if that person's an Indian person? Or what if that person's Pacific Islander? It doesn't matter. The compatibility has nothing to do with the shell that's on our bodies. Like that's nothing. So I love when Asian guys, and that's what's crazy. You said the stat of like, it's low Asian men. Like, mm-hmm. she like, well, hey, <laughs> not over here. This is Issa Rae's thing. Issa Rae got in trouble for saying that, that black no. women and Asian men should get together. Let me tell you, the best like self discovery I've had in myself and even conversations and activities have all been with Asian men. Mm-hmm. Like it, it kind of blew my mind. I'm like, wait a minute. We are ethnicity that both works hard. We're both like very smart. We also know what it feels like to be at the bottom of the totem pole and not be desired. There's a commonality between all of that. Do you understand that's like breeding for superpowers? Mm -hmm. Like it literally (laughs) is. Like if we go based on stereotypes only, Asians are the smart ones and black people are the athletic ones. I'm sorry. Don't you want a smart athletic baby? Well, not that black women are the most educated group in America. The most. Yep. The most. So what y'all waiting out on? Why y'all, why y'all sitting there looking dumb? Why? <laughs> Get with the smart woman who's beautiful. <laughs> y'all are sitting there looking dumb. But it's like, I, I, I don't know why. I, I went on a date with the Russian guy and I'm like, this is, this is interesting. And you do find you do find similarities in people who don't look like you. Mm -hmm. The goal of this podcast is to get people in a position of aptitude. It's not just like listening and understanding. It's having a point, uh, a jump off point to say, okay, well, here's how I'm going to make a change in my life. And so if you are a black woman listening to this podcast right now or watching this video right now, and you are trying to get to a space where you give yourself permission to feel desired, to be desired um, in a world that hasn't made that lane for you, that hasn't paved that way for you, what is the jump off point? What is the starter point? I'm all about going deeper. So because I'm a therapist, I want to go back and explore all of the different scenarios and maybe even your upbringing where you felt like you were unwanted. Right. Because I really do a lot of believe that a lot of the stuff that we experience come from our upbringing, whether that's good, bad or indifferent, even with dating and how we do a relationship is what we saw or didn't see with our parents and all of that stuff. So I would take it all the way back and say, like, let's explore some of those times where you felt like you weren't wanted. What did that look like? Mm -hmm. And then more more than likely we're going to make a current connection with that. Yeah, I'll say circling answer. back to like identifying those things that make you awesome and like repeating them to yourself. So if somebody was like, I feel like I'm not wanted, I'd just be like, well, do you want you? And what do you want about you? Like what what is awesome? Think about those things that like um, make you happy, your closest friends, what do they love about you? Mm-hmm. And if you're repeating those things to yourself and you're going out in public, you're like, yeah, I have something to offer. I have these things because this is what I love about myself. And this is what those who are closest to me love about me too. If I had to do a call of action and to what would be desirable is it might be because I'm from the South and our Southern hospitality is always that charm. And I've kind of narrowed it down to just speaking. Mm-hmm. Literally people who are desired and who who gravitate to people are people who just say, hey, how are you? Good morning. 
we were trained growing up in the South, like, if you enter a room, you better speak. Mm -hmm. So I still have that. And so anyone who just, if you're in Starbucks or if you're anywhere, just, hey, how are you? Just that smile and speaking to someone like, oh, I like that. Because it's different. Yes. So I'm always play to what the common people don't think about. And I'm like, it's simple. So if you're struggling, just speak up. Mm -hmm. Just say, hey, how are you? Oh, I like your shirt. Hey, those are nice shoes. Easy. And that's going to be people. People can't really be mean to you if you say something nice about them. If they are, then just run. But normally people will say, thank you. I appreciate that. And that's going to instill your confidence that you can speak up and be presented anywhere. Any country you go to, any state you go to. Doesn't matter. Just speak and say hello. Once you start that inner work of the self-love and accepting all of who you are, right? And we talked about before we started therapy, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta throw that in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but making sure that you're in a space to say, you know what, I accept all of who I am. And that's the only way that I'm gonna be able to attract someone who's gonna accept all of who I am because I'm in that right space. So I would tell that person to work on themselves, work on that self-love, and at least that's the first part of the process mm -hmm. agreed yeah i, I would agree. say identifying what you have to offer so that just goes right along the same yeah. lines what you what you have and just like embracing that and telling that to yourself in your head yeah. as you're yeah. as you're going out and just giving yourself that extra boost of confidence not relying on outside sources to give you that but be walking in a room and being like yeah i'm the shit. okay i'm here all right what can you bring me what can you what can you add or what can we add to each other to make this work? Yeah. Not being like, okay, what can I just give you? And what can, nah, 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 nah. you know, just taking in what you have, using that as a confidence boost and just getting out there. So a girl said, I'm dark skinned and I don't feel sexy when I go out in public. I would tell her, do you understand people always love what's different? Mm -hmm. They want something that no one else can have. Yeah. That's why, for whatever reason, black ice cream, like charcoal ice cream became popular because everyone's like, it's a different. Like we know every, we know all the other flavors. We know all the other shades. But look at this bl dark black. Yeah, let's grab it. You will always be different. So you will always have an advantage. I think what's important and one of the things in the book that I really talk about is the game of desire. It's that like count yourself into play. Count yourself in as a player. You belong here. You are desired. It Everybody has a different starting point as well, too. And so I think with Black women, there's an acknowledgement that has to happen of like, you have a right in this game. You are here to play and you are a force. But at the same time, let's also acknowledge your start line's a little different, that your work is a little yeah. bit heavier than the average person. And that's shit, but that's just the reality of things. Um, but working together, I think conversations like these are so empowering. And I can't even begin to say how all of you in each unique ways in my life have just truly impacted me. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you to everybody who's listened so far. Um, and go get the book because these two motherfuckers are in it and they're yeah. badass as hell. <laughs> And if you like this, you're going to love that. Yes. <laughs> Keandra, where can we find out more about you? Oh my what are you goodness. working on right now? Oh, my goodness. So I can I even say, you know, tough stuff be top secret. I'm working on a new digital show. So stay connected with Yay! me on social media because that's going to be dropping sh soon. So you can follow me on all things Keandra Jackson. That's K-I-A-U-N-D-R-A. Or you can check out my website, KeandraJackson.com. Uh, used to think about you when I had no one to talk to That little bougie kind of moody bouncer when you walk through Baby used to get the Brazilian wax Yeah, I put that on a wax cell phone, pull it out the bag Make up, do your makeup while you all up in the mix